Greetings from all of us at Five Star Metals. My name is Ty Chapman. I'm the president of Five Star. Uh, I decided to do something differently in this video. I'm actually shooting this video from Galveston, and behind me you can see the entrance to the Houston Ship Channel. And when I look at this, when I look at this Ship Channel, one of the things I think about is if the United States is set to become a net energy exporter uh, this year or early next year, where is all that oil going to go, and where does it go now? So if you look at the chart I'm showing you. It really is interesting to see how much of a difference a few years make. The United States is now uh, the top net, uh, the top oil producer in the world. Now that can vary depending on how much Saudi Arabia and Russia are pr producing. But if you look, the rise uh, in U.S. production since 2010 has been just absolutely astounding and frankly amazing. You see it dip certainly with the downturn, but you see it going back up. And an interesting thing happened at the end of uh, 2018. The Gulf Coast region standing alone actually became an exporter of oil. So back in 2007, the United States was importing, uh, the net imports the, for the Gulf Coast region was about 6.6 .6 million barrels a day. That has since changed where we're actually exporting almost half a million barrels a day. So that's a pretty big change. Overall in 2018, uh, net imports from foreign countries averaged about 2.34 million barrels a day which is 11% of the petroleum consumption in the United States. However, that's on a low from 1957. So the last time we reached that level was 1957. So the graph I'm showing you shows that differential in uh, imports and exports, but just for the Gulf Coast region. But I got to thinking, where does all that crude oil go? And luckily, the EIA has answered that information for us. And the chart I'm showing you shows the countries where we export oil. Now, you'll note that uh, Asia is our primary customer, followed by Europe, followed by Canada. But a few interesting things to, to pay attention to on that is, first of all, uh, China was by far the biggest, biggest consumer of U.S. oil or buyer of U.S. oil at the beginning of the year. And since then, they've been overtaken by South Korea and some other countries. That may be happening because of the trade war, but it's a huge, huge opportunity uh, for U.S. oil and for the market. Canada received about 378,000 barrels a day of U.S. crude during 2018, uh, representing about 19% of our total exports. Uh, South Korea did surpass China, uh, averaging 236,000 barrels a day compared with China's 228,000 barrels a day. But again, that's because we basically went three months without sending a single barrel of crude to China. So what that tells me is there's absolute huge growth opportunities for U.S. oil worldwide. And you might ask, why do we export oil? And that's a very good question. Refiners spent billions of dollars tooling their refineries in the United States to operate on heavy sour crude. And with the shell, blend, uh, the shell uh, boom, a lot of the crude that we produce is light sour, so they're quality differential. But because they've already spent that huge amount of money and they have that huge capital investment, it doesn't make sense to retool the refinery, so they'd rather just continue to import the heavy sour crudes that they need and send the actually better light sweet crude to other countries. So that's why we export oil, but I just wanted you guys to take a look at that and be aware of it and to think about the market opportunities that are gonna exist for petroleum products going forward. As always, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your support and thank you for your friendship. If you need anything, let us know. Take care.